there you're watching your trades on ET now with me Sneha and with me as always is uh, Priyanka and uh, Priyanka well, what a day in trade today Every day I think happy alternate we're talking yeah, about we're talking this Yeah we're talking about this but well fresh levels and not on any one index alone you have fresh new highs on Nifty you have that for Sensex and you have fresh new highs coming in for Nifty Bank as well no wonder it's been a terrific Tuesday for us because it's been a record day for D Street as well Nifty has hit or in fact crossed 23700 for the first time Shri Ram Finance as well as Axis Bank were the companies or the stocks rather that led this rally that we saw coming today we also spoke with Shri Ram Finance earlier and uh, Sensex has also hit 78000 for the first time Mid cap has also hit record high, but has closed slightly in the red. Small cap, of course, there is no points for guessing, has also hit record high. Amara Raja Energy and Raymond have led the rally in the small cap space. Nifty Bank also hit that 52 a 500 mark for the first time. We reached 52 and we kept building up on top of that top sectoral gain of. That was mainly led by Axis Bank, and you also had other private banks that were leading this rally, the likes of um, ICICI, HDFC, and Kotak as well. Nifty IT has closed in the green, and that was dominantly led by Tech Mahindra. So very good moves coming in for Nifty IT as well. Nifty Realty, however, on the flip side, is the index that has closed in the red today, down over one and a half percent, dragged by names like Macrotech Developers as well as Oberoi Realty. Uh, Nifty Metal has declined for a second session in a row as well. NMDC and Vedanta are the big losers. From that pack, Nifty Energy also down half a percent. BPCL and Power Grid have dragged the most when it comes to that pack. But uh, other than that, let's also talk about some big buzzers in today's trading session on an individual basis. You had uh, Amara Raja that was buzzing, uh, that uh, was up for uh, 20% in upper circuit, receded a little bit, but has ended the day at 19% higher. Craftsman Automation did pretty well on the back of that MOU, 13% higher. Garden Reach, the defense pack continues to be a buzz, 11% higher. Raymond on the Back of that demerger news that has been floating in the market for a couple of days, six and a half percent higher. Well spun Westlife on the back of that note, LIC Housing, Patanjali, JBA Auto, Electra Green Tech. All of these stocks have recorded stellar gains today, anywhere between four and twenty percent on the upside. But uh, this was a brief wrap of what we saw in the market. But Priyanka, what stood out to you today? Actually, banks again. If you look at private space bank, in fact, you know, uh, since you mentioned uh, that there were record levels, and what we've mm. seen is that spaces which have moved. uh mid cap and small cap especially yes. we are at record levels but what about mid cap and small cap they did saw a massive sell off in many of the counters where counters falling more than 4.45% in fact such a scenario we also saw in us markets also whereas profit taking is happening in big ai stocks wherever there has been a momentum so uh is the is, is the is this some kind of churning sector rotation happening looks like because now the ball is shifting completely to banks and that to be private space banks and a uh, lot of uh, other stocks which are on the move like you just mentioned about amara amara raja excite entire auto pack auto ancillary that space has been on the move couple of notes on amara raja jp morgan investec we've come up uh, with brokerage notes there were a couple of notes from clsa on the qsr channel check also this entire space was also in focus wherein they have given a sell rating on jubilin they've given a West Life, they have given a sell rating and buy rating on Burger King, and they have listed down their reasons for on the basis of the small uh, channel check what they have done in the smaller cities. But then the standout gainers clearly is Nehi is are lying from some particular spaces. Capital goods again, they are standout gainers. Some of the names like uh, they are from the mid cap name only, but Lakshmi Machine Works, Bharat Bijli, they have been on the back of uh, they have been in the hands of bulls from last many days. And again, we saw some of the uh, auto ancillary names like uh, Gabriel, Banco, other than uh, JBM Auto, other than the battery counters, and again some of the chemicals name, chemical, uh, agrochemical names were again buzzing. But clearly, looks like the money is moving towards large cap, and hence we saw a move on the indices also. Now, how, what to make of the markets from here? Levels, what do I add? Uh, we have Kunal Bhotra joining us from the studio. Kunal. Uh, There were some signs of exhaustion, if you talk about on Friday, but then market clearly surprised us. Uh, you saw levels like yesterday, and again, uh, yet another record levels on Nifty Bank Nifty today. Mm. Are we up for? Uh, is there another leg up which you can assume? Because every day we see a mild call buying on the upper strikes, but at least there is. Uh, it is an uptrend only. 
I think it's a ferocious buying which you yeah. saw and uh, led by large cap names. I think that's the best way to summarize this kind of a market because you know earlier in the last many legs, many versions of the market rally, we were aided by more small cap, mid cap, which were outperforming. But the large cap uh, mojo or the large cap rally was missing and specifically the banking names, private sector banking stocks specifically. So I think this time around, we are seeing a very strong comeback from the private sector banking stocks and I think that's helping the cause for the market. So when banks, banking stocks and the large cap names participate, the markets generally don't get overbought. They generally get into a more of a confidence zone. So right now what we are hitting is more of a confidence zone for the markets where we would probably expect the indices to move up higher. What's also aiding, so I think uh, in a couple of days back, the India VIX was almost at 12.75, 12.5 mark. We are now almost at 14.5 plus levels for the India VIX. That's also aiding for the indices to move up higher and break those psychological barriers very quickly. So that's, uh, you know, the uh, overall, uh, you know, view in my sense is that we should probably be breaking that 53,000 mark for the bank nifty also pretty quickly. All right, well, 53,000 on uh, Nifty Bank is what Kunal is spotting. And Kunal, hopefully the way things have been going up, we do reach that mark pretty soon. But amid a market like this, where there is so much of an optic being seen all of a sudden, mm. in, especially in today's trading session, how does one navigate a market like this going ahead? What are your picks here? So yeah, you maintain those buy calls and you shift focus more towards the performing names. So two stocks in that category which are be bullish on. JK Cement is something which has started to look attractive. So very few cement stocks have gone through a very strong bout of rally and then a mild phase of correction and these stocks are bouncing back again from their respective moving averages. So the same is the case with JK Cement. Buy with a target of 44.50, stop loss at 42.60. And the second would be about l &T Finance. Financials, I think, uh, you know, look extremely powerful and strong. Sriram Finance, Chola Finance, etc. Even l &T Finance has confirmed a big breakout above the 180 plus mark today. So would uh, look out for targets on the higher side of 186, stop loss at 177. All right, interesting. Uh, uh, two stocks coming in on the buy radar for uh, uh, Kunal. Thanks very much, Kunal, uh, for both the recommendations. Thank you. And then now let's get you word from the wise. Samit Vartak, CFA, CIO, and uh, CIO and partner for Sage One Investment Advisory. He's looking at companies with a 25% of earning growth expectations. What are the sectors he's staying away from and which ones he's looking to add? Let's listen into. See, I am looking at companies where I'm expecting, you know, close to 25% kind of earnings growth. A uh, lot of companies in the IT sector or FMCG will never give you that, even half of that. You know, so they, they are never really part of, uh, you know, my portfolio. Um, uh, especially chemical is a very different ball game. I mean, it's been uh, struggling and, you know, there are intermittent signs of it reviving, but still, you know, it's very difficult. China's dumping and the competition across the globe. When a lot of chemical companies went through huge capacity expansion, you know, and then it is impacting the margins uh, significantly. And so, you know, maybe it's not the right time yet, but there will be time. Uh, but, you know, similar, if you see the capacity expansion happening across many of these companies, I mean, just look at the number of QIPs which are coming. Like they will go through similar fate, what chemical companies go, through, uh, you know, went through uh, before. So one needs to be careful on uh, on, on that. So uh, even if it's not IT or, uh, you know, FMCG or, uh, you know, chemicals, I think even within building material, which are catering more towards the private uh, uh, kind of a capex, uh, you know, some, some things like which are into, uh, you know, niche uh, building materials, I think they haven't done really uh, well over the last uh, one, one and a half years. And there the valuations are pretty reasonable. I'm pretty sure if not, you know, if India does well, they may not grow during the CapEx times, but they will grow at, a, you know, with a lag. All right, that's the word coming in from Samit Vartak on our word from the Y segment today. But once again, if you revisit the markets and see what has happened today sectorally, Nifty Bank has been a very strong gainer. It's not only been, it's not only been today, it's been over a couple of sessions as well. Nifty Bank has scaled new record highs and it has all been led by private lenders. They have often been the dark horses of Dalal Street. But what's triggering this outperformance? Let's take stock of the moves and the key triggers with my colleague Gaurav, who tracks this sector closely and has some interest data to put things into perspective. Gaurav. Well, yes. Today we saw Nifty reaching its all-time high level, and the key highlight here was, the, was that the private banks, because leading contributors in Nifty were private banks, and even if you look at Nifty Bank Index, that also reached its all-time high level. It breached 
the 52,000 mark that we had been waiting for. And the reason being that when we talk about private banks, there are cer certain triggers which are actually leading to this outperformance of the private banks. And first one is the valuation. So we have compiled some of the data for valuation. And when we look at some of the private banks like HDFC Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank, they're trading nearly their fire average valuation when we talk about price to book value. Even in terms of ICICI Bank, Axis Bank, we have seen this gap between the current price to book value versus five year average has actually narrowed and that is the reason why it seems that private banks are at a cheaper valuation and also at an attractive valuation because given that they are actually showing stronger loan book growth versus the PSUs. The next reason that we have is that now street is also being a little bullish on private banks. So recently we saw Macquarie coming up with a note where they actually upgraded target price for few of the private banks because what they believe is that the ROE of private sector banks is going to be somewhere around 16 to 18 percent versus if you look at some of the PSUs we may see some down performance coming up in the ROE and lastly in terms of PSUs there is a risk of ECL norms also which is not factored in yet. When we talk about valuations also for PSUs we have got some of the PSUs like Bank of Baroda, Union Bank, Canara Bank who are trading almost twice the five year average price to book value when we compare it with the current price to book value. Lastly we also know that in the last few quarters we have seen private banks actually reporting strong set of numbers when it comes to the loan book growth despite having some of the issues which are bank specific but given that this performance is expected to continue for private sector banks this could be another reason why we are seeing this buying coming up in private sector banks so definitely watching out on what happens in private sector banks because if you look at the performance also from 4 june we have got hdfc bank bandhan bank idfc bank federal bank who have actually performed very well in fact, SDFC Bank has actually gained almost by 15% since 4 June's, uh, 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 4 June's performance. So definitely watching out on what happens in private sector banks and overall in the banking sector as well in coming days. Alright, uh, thanks very much uh, Gaurav for, for all that uh, detailed analysis. Uh, thank, uh, we'll stay in uh, for a short break here, more to come on the other side of the show. We have derivatives action, we have other big stories to go ahead. Welcome back. Uh, as we move in now, we've seen that the maximum of the open interest in the action in derivative markets also shifting to the upper calls. Now, uh, clearly the long on, there was a mild trend on Nifty, but now long built up trend on Nifty, Bank Nifty both. Kunal just mentioned that we could be in for another level on Bank Nifty, which is like 53,000. But right now the situation looks like Wix. Uh, 14.3. Uh, the calls were maximum of the call buying was seen at the strike of 23,800 and 900. And support has also risen now, which is at 23,600 because that's the strike where maximum of the put writing has happened. So uh, it uh, looks like saying that another level of leg up. Well, absolutely, another level uh, level of leg up being uh, seen or penciled in rather on the derivative side. But let's also talk about a stock that did pretty well in today's uh, trading session. And I'm talking about Amara Raja. Not only that, the entire battery pack was a buzz. Excite also did well, up 1.5%. But Amara Raja is where the focus is today because that stock, on the back of this announcement that came in the morning, touched 20%, was locked up in upper circuit, uh, receded slightly, but has ended the day with uh, more than 19% up moves. So very stellar moves coming in for Amara Raja today and let's understand why this has happened. Now the company said that its wholly owned subsidiary which is Amara Raja Advanced Cell Technologies has signed a technical licensing agreement with GIB Energy X Slovakia which is a subsidiary of Goshen High Tech Company Limited. This comprehensive agreement enables Amara Raja to manufacture world class lithium ion cells in both cylindrical and prismatic forms. Now let's understand what brokerages have to make of this uh, deal that they've or the agreement that they've gone ahead and signed. First up JP Morgan has maintained a neutral rating on Amara Raja with target price of 1,210 rupees per share. They believe that this technical licensing agreement is a very important milestone for the company and the partnership will help accelerate its development of this uh, of the Giga factory that Amara Raja is making. This should also provide investors more confidence on the company's ability to progress towards the 16 gigawatts uh, capacity target and any clarity on details of this tech partnership, any potential OEM contracts and any equity or debt funding will be key to further re-rating. So that is what JP Morgan had to say. Let's move on, also talk about what Investec had to say on Amara Raja. They too have come out with a note and they have maintained a buy rating with a target 
target price of 1250 rupees per share and they believe that this partnership is going to boost the lithium iron cell manufacturing capabilities of Amara Raja. Remember, Goshen is among the top 10 global lithium iron cell manufacturers of, uh, with backward integration and technology capabilities. So they also expect that on the back of this deal, a valuation catch up in Amara Raja could uh, take the stock ahead and this could also uh, be seen. Valuation catch up is a scenario that Investec is penciling in for Amara Raja. But well, yes, very seller moves coming in. 19% higher is where the stock closed today. All right, that's where uh, the stock closed and we've seen another, uh, another stock from the space has already riding on the bull uh, side. That's excited. So the entire uh, action shifts to battery space now with this news. Let's go ahead. Since we had the CLSA note on QSR space also, let's understand the food delivery apps also. Food delivery aggregator and Zomato rival Swiggy has reported robust growth momentum in calendar year 23 largely led by double-digit order growth and higher average order value. Let's go across to Vinny, uh, who stands by with some interesting data to compare how both have fared. Vinny, over to you. So, good morning and obviously when you're talking about Swiggy's numbers, we mainly get this data coming in from purchases which holds around 33% stake in the company. So, for the calendar year 23, uh, robust growth that Swiggy has also seen in the food delivery as well as quick commerce. We saw the quick commerce trend even shape out well for uh, Zomato. Other than that, the gross order value is at 26%, good growth on a year on your basis in the calendar year. But when you're looking at the revenue growth, it seems like Zomato is growing faster than Swiggy because Zomato managed a revenue growth of around 55%. Swiggy's uh, revenue growth is this time is at around 21%. So in terms of revenue growth, surely we are seeing that Zomato has seen a faster uh, uh, growth than Swiggy. Overall for Swiggy, yes, they've added a new uh, platform fee, new uh, revenue that is there, which is platform fee plus advertising fee, which is added in their uh, revenue stream. So that is positive. And overall, even in terms of the EBITDA performance, even Swiggy has started seeing narrowing in terms of its losses. So adjusted EBITDA, clearly when you're comparing it on a year on year basis for or a Swiggy has started coming down though versus uh, Zomato still seems behind because um, Zomato has achieved that adjusted EBITDA positive it's at uh, 20 million dollars for calendar 23 while Swiggy is still on the negative side so keeping an eye on that all in all what uh, everyone is watching out for is Swiggy's IPO that is keenly awaited in terms of the valuation number that will come in and MK surely maintaining a positive stance on Zomato uh, they believe the higher growth has something been uh, that is aiding the performance of uh, the company especially in quick commerce and they maintain a buy target price of 230 rupees for Zomato CLSA 2 is positive on Zomato positive on Zomato, Vinny talking about the valuations of Spiggy also which is and that's the reason that we've seen the fourth consecutive valuation markup by Invesco also on Swiggy. So IPO bound Swiggy delivers robust growth in their fiscal end in March and the reasons uh, Vinny just cited but then let's hear in uh, what Ilara Securities Karan Turani has to say on why Zomato is faring better when it comes to profitability and what's triggering this out of our performance for it. I think uh, Zomato has been very proactive in certain things. One uh, very big lever for the advertising, one very big lever for the profitability rather is the advertising revenue. So I think if you look at Zomato's take rates, uh, we've seen a sharp improvement from a range of about 70 and a half to 18% to 20% plus. And a bigger driver for this is because of the ad revenue. I think that they've, been, they've been a winner over there very clearly. Uh, second uh, big lever is the platform fee. You know, platform fees have been hiked you know, constantly over the last uh, eight to 10 months. And it started off from about two rupees, and today in some markets it's about five rupees, and potentially this could go to even eight ten rupees. So I think these are the two levers that differentiate uh, Zomato versus Swiggy in terms of profitability. All right, well, so that was on Zomato, a stock that did pretty well in today's trading session. But another stock that did well and was one of the contributors to the rally we saw in Nifty breaking record high coming in. More than 3% gains coming in on this newest Nifty 50 constituent and I'm talking about Sriram Finance. Umesh Revankar, we managed to speak to him. He's the executive vice chairman of Sriram Finance and he told us about the company's growth outlook going forward. And he also touched upon the segments that the company is focusing on as of now for the growth going ahead. This Listen into what he had to say. See, ultimately, our business depends upon the economic activity. And uh, as there is more economic activity across urban and rural market, we should be able to grow more than 15% very comfortably. Uh, yeah, see, basically, we are uh, looking at three uh, growth areas. Uh, one is uh, MSME, 
uh, passenger vehicle and the uh, the gold loan they are likely to grow more than 20% uh, this year maybe including even two wheeler demand also could be higher so we that is all these segments which are likely to grow more than 20% uh, mainly because the infrastructure what we are creating to reach out to the larger public uh, for MSME is working out uh, and also in the gold. Okay, so Mr. Omesh talking to us about the CV growth as well as the gold business growth also on the roadmap ahead. Uh, let's uh, move further. Uh, Lemon Tree Hotels occupancy is poised to improve from quarter two onwards. According to Patanjali G. K. Swani, who's the chairman and managing director for the company, uh, listen to what else he had to say about the runway for the growth and also for the entire sector. While you can say that in spite of heat, it was, you know, a, a decent performance, uh, I'm looking at trend lines and I expect the catch-up will happen really from Q2 uh, when there will be improvements vis-a-vis -vis the previous year in, in occupancy. If I look at the trend lines on an annualized basis, then I'm pretty sure that this year will be better than the previous year. Uh, but this quarter was not better than the previous quarter. It was rough, roughly the same in terms of demand. I think it's a great idea because this enables you to participate on a distributed basis, on a de-risked basis, across the future of the travel and tourism sector in India. By the way, 200 billion is only 6 point some percent of GDP. And the global average is over 10 percent average. So I think there is a lot of growth and a big runway for the tourism and travel sector in India. And this uh, putting it in the in this index, uh, I think is a is a great way to participate. All right, so that's the word coming in from the management of Lemon Tree Hotels. We've uh, spoken about all the stocks that were abuzz and listened to a good amount of management commentaries today. So, well, lots to look forward to in tomorrow's trading session, especially now that we have hit record highs across indices and counters, Priyanka, today. But with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Your Trades from me, Priyanka, and the entire team that put this show together. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.